Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Connor, and this is our weekly TV news where we talk about renewals, cancellations, premiere dates, pilot orders, series orders, development deals, all sorts of things. There wasn't anything for me to watch this week, was there? Nope. Oh, cool. Because I just, just thought check, because sometimes you forget to tell me. I'm on the ball this week. I completely I did everything I was supposed to do. Uh, the one trailer we are going to talk about, I know you've watched, so... Oh, uh, you better be sure. I'm positive. Would you I like to... watch the trailer. Would you like to bet something on it? No, because you're probably <laughs> right. I just don't remember <laughs> watching any trailers. I'll happily bet 10 grand on this if you want. I'm feeling I, confident. I, I feel like I might lose. <laughs> so yeah, we're talking about TV news. Uh, so yes, yeah, this is something we do every weekend. And uh, yeah, here we go. I, I have nothing I have nothing else to do in my, my intro. It's just shortened. It's, it to is the, complete. Short to the, to the point this week. Uh, so we'll get straight into it with Renewals Dark Season 3. Renewal. Also, yeah. third and final season. Which sounds disappointing because, oh, you're only three seasons, but this sounds like a tight story. Yeah. Uh, the creator said it was always kind of the, the, the overall story they intended. Um, and also, this is the, that's another interesting part, given how long season two took, uh, they start shooting season three in four weeks and the creator said it is coming 2020. So it could be late 2020, it could be later Probably in the year. Probably late 2020. But... Um, that's good. Ball's rolling. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah. I mean, we haven't even started the, you know, season two yet, but let's do it. That's coming this Friday. Although I did uh, start rewatching season one last night, so... Uh, oh, you <laughs> bastard. So, oh, I've got dark in the brain. I forgot how much Make, I like the opening title need, music. Uh, I don't remember it. It'll come back when you watch it, it will, two. yeah. You need to uh, you need to make up some diagrams of characters for me because <laughs> I'm gonna need a refresher course. <laughs> Do you know I need like, flashcards, maybe some flashcards. Watching it a second time is funny how like because I've forgotten all the names, but as I'm watching the first episode last night, it was like like I was kind of guessing names like a second before they said them. Like I and was you, like, and then you're like, oh, that's that guy. Yeah, I was like, your name's Charlotte. It's Charlotte. Yes, yes. Yes. Magnus. Oh, yeah, I remember someone be called Magnus. That's right. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, maybe some flashcards, Pete. And then I remember the guy who looks like Mads Mikkelsen has a brother named Mads and a son named Mikkel. <laughs> You're right, he does. That was, all this was coming back to me as I was watching the pilot. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping I'll fit in all the whole season before Friday. It's going to be tight. Ambitious. But... Mm-hmm. I don't have to like review anything because normally what slows me down when I was like doing big little lies is that I'd have to record a review for each one after each episode. Whereas with this, I can do two or three in a row back to back just when I've got a, a spare couple hours. Should, should you find a spare four hours? Yeah, and just sort of fire through it. So I, I'm feeling hopeful. I'm feeling hopeful. Anyway, so yeah, season three is renewed and it's going to be the final season. So we're getting the end of the story. Uh, that's cool news. Um, Netflix also renewed Russian Doll for season two, which I know a lot of people are happy about. People loved that show. Um, we weren't super into it, but people loved that show. Um, Netflix also oh. renewed for season two Love, Death, and Robots, their animated shorts series. Yeah, we never turned around because they were much shorter than we thought they were going to be. Yeah, they were like five, ten minutes, some of them. So it was, it was like... Yeah, I think the longest ones were maybe 15. So yeah. um, I still haven't got around to checking it out myself. Yeah. And then the final renewal this week is Elias Finest Spectrum have renewed it for season two. So the Bad Boys spinoff is going to get a second season. It's, uh, it's what everyone was clamoring for. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's all the all the buzzes around on this one. Yep. Uh, and then speaking of things ending, uh, I mean, this is not. I wouldn't call this a cancellation as such. This is more of a, a show ending. Uh, the Good Place is going to end with season four, and this is uh, basically to make sure was talking about it and said that you know after it started going quite well, you know, late, you know, in season one, maybe early season two, like, there was the temptation to like continue it past its natural end point but they'd actually mapped out what the plan was and season four is the natural end to the plan so yeah he said it was uh when when they were in the writers room for season two mm. uh, they mapped it out what's so what's so really weird about it though is that usually comedies don't have this this problem where they have to map things out but the good place is such a plot focused show with a, such a deep mythology that it kind of had to do something like this yeah it's funny because usually those kind of sitcoms often become some of my least favorite because they they get so caught up in having to be 
a story as well as just being hilarious, right? Yeah. Uh, so they, they can often suffer from that, but from what I've seen of the Good Place, it it does not. Good Place ain't half bad. Good Place ain't half bad. Um, yeah. Uh, and then the trailer that we're going to talk about is uh, Pennyworth. Oh, I did see this. You're right. Because we talked about it already, which is why I knew yeah. beyond a shadow of a doubt. So it tell, me... tells you a lot that I forgot I'd watched it like two days ago. But you owe me ten grand, as we as we established. Uh, well, I, I never took that bet. <laughs> you did. I've got it on recordings. You, you can re- you scan through your recording. You'll have to edit in some fancy footage to make it look like I did. Oh, I'll, I'll chop a few sentences together. <laughs> I, bet, I bet you would. <laughs> For ten grand, I'll chop a few sentences together. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, trailer, uh, a trailer for Pennyworth, a uh, full trailer, full like two minute or so trailer. It's um, it's definitely trying to be like Kingsman Light, but with Alfred in the sixties. Yeah, it doesn't look terrible. It doesn't it's... necessarily look good. I just I have no interest in the concept. I mean, I'm going to watch it for the for the DC TV show podcast because that's you know just what we do. But we're terrible people. But like I like I just don't I don't want a Batman spin off that's like a a, a, a kind of lukewarm James Bond show. <laughs> I just don't yeah. want that. <laughs> See, if if this wasn't a Batman spin off, you would not be into it anyway. At no, I wouldn't all, be because no. this is not your sort of the, show. The, the fact that this is connected to Batman is the only reason why I'm ever going to watch it. I would be somewhat interested based off, you know, if, if you took the exact same premise and removed the names, I would be, you know, okay, it's an alternate history 60s and it's kind of a secret agent spy sort of thing. I would be somewhat interested. So I, I'm not going to, I'm, tr- I'm going to try not to hold the Batman thing against it too much. Okay. Unless it starts just being, hey, look at all this Batman shit constantly I'll, I'll let it have thomas wayne because it's established thomas wayne after that we're having problems yeah but how can they even hint at batman without like because at least with young bruce and gotham okay he's supposed to be already scared of bats and they milk it don't get me wrong they milk it something awful <laughs> but yeah. like how do you even, like he's not even bar- he's not even he's he's only going to just meet martha all, <laughs> all i'm saying is rachel ghoul's been around a long ass time ah uh, yeah <laughs> league of assassins they're going to pop up I would not be too surprised if they did. League of Assassins. Who else is old and sort of immortal? Or there's others. I'm, I'm sure there's others. Vandal but... Savage. Vandal Savage. I could see maybe like a a young, like who else is old in like Batman times? Do we get like a young? Like it would surprise me if at some point there's like a a baby Jim Gordon has a cameo. Like I do. You know what, what I'd actually think would be actually a, a decent one that I'd be in for. Hmm. Wintergreen. Okay, you're thinking from the Deathstroke stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because you know he's he's been in the spy world a long time. That, I'd say that's more related to greater DC than it is Batman specifically. It though. is, but it's also one that I'd be like, go on, then you can have that. Okay. Uh, let's move on there. We got we got stuff. Uh, Netflix has hired Coco screenwriter Matthew Aldrich. Uh, to oversee its live-action adaptations of C.S. Lewis's The Chronicles of Narnia series into films and TV shows. So they announced a while ago that they'd gotten the rights to these and they were going to be developing multiple projects on them. Uh, so this is just an update and that they've actually hired someone to kind of run it. <laughs> well, Coco was phenomenal. So this is mm. a, a positive move. And I, I'm a Narnia fan, so I hope these are good. I've seen maybe half of the 2006 movie. Yeah, the movies aren't amazing, but I've been a bit of fan of the books since childhood. I wasn't watching it properly. It was just kind of on, like, over Christmas uh, when I was talking to people. Yeah, I'm sure it was, yeah. Uh, Back when you still had TV on. Okay, yeah. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> so, ne- <laughs> next up. Oh, we're actually at like the series orders already. Like, which, I mean, I'm still on page one of my news, but this is mostly, not even a comedy, we're straight into dramas okay good news cycle yeah, yeah. News cycle that time week. of year uh this is a biggie though uh mm-hmm. in a lot of ways uh so we got another warner media show that's been ordered straight to series order for dune the sisterhood how did i not see anything about this you did not see this news okay so this is a tie-in to to Dune because they're doing two movies with uh, Denis Villeneuve, right? Then they did two. I thought they did three. 
I think well, I, th- I think they've confirmed two. Maybe maybe they will end up doing three. But at least this last I remember hearing it was two. Yeah, you could be right. Yeah. Um, he's going to direct the pilot. Well, it's going to be stylish as shit. Yeah, then. he's going to direct the pilot, and he's going to be a producer on the show. It's set in the universe of Frank Herbert's epic Dune novel series. Dune: The Sisterhood is told through the eyes of the mysterious order of women known as the Bean Guess Guesserit. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Probably. Uh, not. I feel like that's probably got a, a specific pronunciation that I'm not I'm not hitting. Uh, and it's been, I've seen I've seen the David Lynch movie once, right? I can't remember how they said this. <laughs> it's been a while, yeah. right? Uh, given extraordinary abilities by their mastery of body and the mind, the being guesser it expertly weave through the feudal politics and intrigue of the Imperium, pursuing plans of their own that will ultimately lead them to the enigmatic planet of uh, Arrakis, known to the inhabitants as the inhabitants as Dune. Uh, so yeah, uh, Villeneuve will direct the pilot. Uh, John Spates is going to write it, uh, and they're also co-writing the screenplays for the films uh, that they're doing. So it's full on like, okay, no, this is part of that world. Yeah, it's tying into that. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if that means there's going to be like some of these characters in the movie, um, but given it's the, the same person who's kind of working on it, it, they might, you know, be in the movie yeah. but then expanded on the show. Uh, and this it's bizarre they're doing it with this but this definitely makes me think of what disney are doing with their marvel shows where they're they're making things that are clearly connected to the movies yeah so i feel like warner bros like hey we've got that dune coming that's gonna be big right even though everything denis villeneuve has made has not been financially that (laughs) that huge they're hoping this will be the one that turns it around he's a he's a great filmmaker yeah uh critics love him yeah box office not so much yeah, maybe maybe Dune will be the one that changes that because it well, all. Do you know what does baffle me though is mm-hmm. they keep throwing money at him. They do, they do. Um, they recognise talent, I guess. They're just like, oh, it has to be the right project so the the, the general so, audience is. One of them's got to stick with the public. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So this is interesting. Um, you know, I am I am very much looking forward to the movies. I guess I'm looking forward to this show now as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually uh, I've got the the first book ready to 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 start reading soon. Oh, I... I mean, yeah, we've seen the movie. I've I've got the, a general idea, but I assume I wonder. I assume most of this stuff in this series will be new material, as because whereas the movies will be, I think, will be clearly the story of the book. You know, there's quite a few books, isn't there? Though, is there? Yeah. Oh, there is. Yeah, novel series. You're right. Um, yeah, maybe tr- maybe that's true. Maybe I think there was two or three original novels, and then other people have come in and done more okay yeah maybe, maybe there'll be material from those later books then it'll use for yeah useful use for the show uh maybe it'll be a bit of a mix maybe maybe it'll be like when we get comic book tv shows where okay there's stuff they take from the books inspired but, by yeah. this but it's kind of its own thing as well yeah it's not necessarily like a straight adaptation whereas i'm ex- expecting the movies to be a direct adaptation of the main story of the first whatever two or three books it is yeah yeah um basically i'm expecting the story of the movie from david lynch over at least two films because that's the one thing we said is that was clearly enough material to have two movies out of turns out we were right um we were right this is not a hobbit situation where they're they're milking it dry like no it's actually got enough stuff in there that it needs two movies at least it absolutely does all right so next up nbc universal uh sci-fi network uh is developing a lobo tv show which would be potentially a spin-off to krypton and probably feature the same actor uh from krypton in the role i would uh, be shocked if it didn't yeah emmy j scanlon uh, being the the actor in question um but yeah so yeah it's you know lobo was kind of this uh, spoof uh character uh of uh, both wolverine and punisher it was kind of like oh they have all these ultra violent characters at marvel so we're going to do we're going to do lobo <laughs> uh, yeah so he he was introduced in the premiere of season two of krypton he's going to be a character throughout that season and yeah, so uh, it maybe shows that sci-fi are feeling quite confident about Krypton and the idea of having more uh, DC sci-fi content yeah, connected yeah, to definitely. it. Yeah, definitely. So I think on um specifically to to, uh, to what Lobo. I like Lobo as a supporting character. Very rarely have I liked Lobo as a lead. It, yeah, it's Harley Quinn. It's Harley Quinn effect. Yeah. So I expect I'll very much enjoy Lobo in Krypton. Um. I don't know if I want a Lobo show, mm. but I mean, probably going to get one anyway, aren't we? Uh, very possibly. Um, Cameron Welsh, who's an executive producer on Krypton, is going to serve as the executive producer and writer of the show. So they've got someone from the Krypton staff doing the show, so it's not... 
it's just pretty connected. Yeah. yeah. And uh, assuming it's the same actor, so far so good. We've got uh, not got a huge look at him yet. No, but... so we've had like one scene of him so far. But... Yeah. But it was pretty good in that scene. Yeah. Uh, so interesting, interesting, to say the least. Uh, so I've got a couple of stories here. Actually, no, I've got I've got one on its own, and then there's another couple coming up later. Uh, about Quibi, which I I was actually almost Sorry, about what Quibi. I was almost not going to put these in because I felt like this isn't even really a TV show thing. But sorry, can, can we, what the hell's Quibi? Q U I B I. I'm surprised you don't know what this is because you shared a story about this earlier this week. Did I? Yes. So this is baffling me that you're completely oblivious right now. So Quibi is a new short form uh, service that's going to have short, basically short chapters to a story that could be anything from two to four hours long. Uh, they're thinking it'll be like 10 to 12 parts. Each part will be like five to 10 minutes and it'll make us, so it's basically a movie in episodic form. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. I've, I've Googled it. I remember what this is. I just never actually re- looked at the name of it when mm-hmm. I, I, I shared that story. Yeah, yeah, the services. Uh, so the one yeah. thing I've got here in this particular story uh, is that Spielberg wants to do a, a horror series uh, on Quibi, uh, which, is his, has he got a title for it yet? Uh, I don't think he does. I think there was like a working title, but uh, basically, he's got a super scary story he wants to do. It was the, it was the head of uh, uh, Quibi, uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg, who was saying this. Uh, he's writing it himself. He hasn't written anything in a while, so that's kind of special. Uh, but yeah, so written over five or six episodes, which Quibi calls chapters like a novel, uh, the program is being developed under the title Spielberg's After Dark. So it may not be called that, but that's what that's what they're, they're calling yeah, it right probably. now. Uh, so here's the weird gimmick with this, though, and it is very much a gimmick. It's terrible. You will only be allowed to watch this when it's dark. There'll, there'll be there'll be a timer on the service uh, tied to your local time so that it so that it knows when it gets dark when sunset happens and then it'll become available and then once dawn happens it'll become unavailable until the next night. <laughs> also, you can only watch it on your phone or a mobile a mobile device that has location. Uh, this this uh, whole service is only mobile. Oh, I don't even know that. It's only mobile. Yeah, because I I was reading it when I you know when I when I saw this article earlier in the week, and mm. I, obviously the name never stuck with me. But yeah, I was reading about it. This is stupid for a number of reasons. One, what about people who work nights? Two, what about say uh like people who live in like Alaska where you know for parts of the year it's only dark for like two hours. Oh, what what about this? What about people who take the cinema very seriously? And actually have a dedicated theater and blackout room for the purpose of watching things in the dark, no matter what the time. Is. Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and what about just people who are asleep at night, and you know want to watch it, you know when they can, but can't you know, manage it in pitch black of night. But they can just. I mean, know. that's that's your weakest argument so far. Is that like most people don't go to sleep as soon as night falls. I, I mean, what I mean is though it. it, it at the minute, right in, in summer, uh, it, it's light outside until ten, quarter, yeah, ten half ten, comfortably. Lots of people go to bed by ten o'clock. Sure, we we don't, but lots of people do. <laughs> Damn right, we don't. <laughs> no, lots of people do, and then get up for work at like you know six in the morning because people apparently have normal time schedules. <laughs> Um. Yeah, it's silly. I I don't feel angry about it. I mean, I'm never going to watch this. I'm probably never going to watch any of these Quibi things. And if we ever did do a Quibi thing, we'd watch the whole thing and just talk about it like it's a movie. I'm 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 not going to sit down and review a five ten minute thing. No, never. So, I think the I think the words I used were "this is asinine." There you go. There's, there's a little bit more foul language in there, but yeah, um, just just a stupid idea. Uh, next up, Amazon are developing a series which is loosely inspired by Sandra Bullock's college years. Did she have a wild college? Bullock will execute for just the show alongside Akiva Goldsman. That's uh, Akiva Goldsman of Batman and Robin fame, uh, and John Legend. Uh, and John Legend, yeah. Uh, Casey Perry will write and executive produce. The series is described as a dramedy set in the world of music and dance. 
It will take place in the American Deep South in the 1980s, where one darkly offbeat young woman defies expectations and sets out in search of love, community, and identity of her own. So, basically they thought, oh, hey, you're, you're, you know, you know, early 20s were an exciting time before you became a kind of prof professional actress. Let's do a show about it. <laughs> It's such a ra random thing to base it on, but that's the thing, if, if they'd said this is just a show about that premise and never told me it was based on someone's actual life, I wouldn't think it was weird. It's just a little bit weird because they're like, nah, we're basing this on Sandra Bullock's college years. Yeah, that's the bit, like, is it specific events that she recalls that are going to inspire episodes? I, I don't think it will. I mean, maybe one or two things, but I feel like for the most part, it'll just be made up stories in the state. Like, basically what they're saying is, is that this character will be kind of Sandra Bullock-esque in her personality, and that's probably going to be it and everyone's going to be going right okay now you got to cast a young sandra bullock <laughs> whereas if you just not told us that part you could have done what you wanted <laughs> uh, apparently the idea came came from just conversations between bullock and goldsman so they were just chatting having lunch one day well, and she was like hey you should do a show about me <laughs> no i bet she told a story about a college years just one story and he went i got an idea money. <laughs> I've got an idea. I don't have ideas of my own, but now I've got an idea because you give me an idea. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then uh, back to Quibi. And I, I'm probably never going to bring up Quibi again. I just put this one in because it's another big name attached to something. And I mentioned it already once on this episode. Has this one got a stupid gimmick as well? Uh, no, I don't think so. This is Don Cheadle who's going to be in this one. Uh, who, who they like? Uh, he's been cast in a sci fi drama called Don't Look Deeper. Uh, which is uh, going to be on Quibi. Uh, it's set in Mer Merced, California, uh, 15 minutes into the future, and centers on a high school senior who can't seem to shake the feeling that something about her just isn't right. She's not human, not one of us. This revelation sets in motion a series of events that suddenly puts her entire life in jeopardy. That sounds like a fine show idea, but it's going to be five minute, ten minute segments. So, yeah. I'm good. Uh, Twilight director Catherine Hardwick is in place to direct and executive produce. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I mean, that's also a little, you know, mark against it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the service is launching in April, by the way. April 2020, so. Is, is it April 1st, by any chance? <laughs> April 6th. Oh, damn it. <laughs> it's all just a big joke. Uh, well. So, it's a, a very extended April Fool's was my hope there. Next up, MGM Television has optioned uh, Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff's best-selling young adult sci-fi thriller, Aurora Rising, to develop as a TV show. MGM Television will produce and MGM will internationally distribute the series. Uh, they're currently looking for showrunners and writers. So, the novel, which was published on May, was the first of what they're calling the Aurora Cycle. Uh, so of course, it's a cycle. There's going to be more. Uh, set in the year 20, 23A, uh, Aurora Rising follows Ty Jones, the top cadet of the Aurora Academy, and his unwanted squad of misfits and losers as they slowly realise that the girl they rescued from hundreds of years of cryosleep may be the catalyst for a war millions of years in the making. The book, the first in the Aurora cycle, is slated uh, for publication in 10 foreign territories with more in the works. So yes, it's going around the world. See, that actually sounds like a perfectly good premise, but I bet it's young adult as shit. Yeah, the fact that they're calling it young adult is the only part of that that I don't like. The 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 actual premise sounds fine. You band of misfits in the future, war, millions of years in the making. I can get into all this. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's impossible that someday they might adapt the young adult thing into just a good thing because they like the young adult in a of it isn't necessarily something they actually have to put it's into not it. Like the first two Hunger Games movies were pretty good. The second one was not bad. First one was a little bit weak sauce. Okay, I liked him all in New Declare. I mean, I've not seen it in a long time. For, for a movie about uh, a bunch of kids being forced to kill each other, it was oddly, like, easy. Sure, yeah. <laughs> like, like, I never felt like there was any danger. I never felt like I was watching something that was making me like, go, oh, this is nasty. Or, like, no, I, I don't no. mean gore. I mean, like, feeling uncomfortable because it's such an awful position to be in. it had that young adult sheen to it. Um, yeah, it had, it had this yeah. sheen that just made it feel like it was, it was a breezy think... entertainment. The second one was definitely better, though. Uh, second one was better, yeah. Yeah. And then three and four were just... Pissed meh. it away. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
all right so that's aurora rising um and on the final bit of news this week it's a shorter show less things to yeah. talk about these days uh post up front so this is the this is the problem AMC has put in development Fast Company, a dramedy from Daniel Day Kim's production banner 3AD Media. Uh, sorry, 3AD Media. Um, Daniel Day Kim, of course, uh, was an angel. Uh, the spin-off of the hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> I love, I love that him and especially uh, Jonathan. Oh, what's his real name? Damn, I've forgotten his real name there. But he's like a producer who like has produced a bunch of TV shows. Because I remember last year, like. I was able to do tons of Buffy references just because he oh, was you were, well, yeah. he was producing like five shows at once across multiple networks. Yeah, it was great. That. It was great. Um, God. Anyway, so yeah, Fast Company, uh, AMC Studios. Uh, so it's AMC that's doing this. Uh, written by uh, Carla Ching, uh, based on her play. Fast Company tells the story of a legendary family of con artists whose compli- complicated history has caused them to go their separate ways, but are forced back together when one of their cons goes sideways. So, yeah, I'm not sure it's for me. It depends. I mean, on AMC, at least I can see it not just. I mean, AMC can have a bland quality to it because we've definitely seen that with other shows. Yeah. But I see more potential there than I do if this was on NBC. <laughs> like, oh, I agree with you there. Yeah. Just inherently, the premise itself isn't that exciting. The show could prove me wrong. Yeah, but on premise, it doesn't excite me. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, so there you go. That's the news. Short and yeah, sweet this week. Thrilling week of amazing headlines. Hey, we got Dune. Dune, Dune was was an interesting headline. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Dark's final season. Oh, full disclosure, actually, by the way, Dark's final season was technically should have been used last week, and it was pointed out in the comments that it was it was not seen. <laughs> so I I rectified that because it's too important not to talk I about. I know it. there was a there was a very short teaser trailer for that Fast and Furious animated series that's coming to Netflix. <sighs> it just had a coming soon. I figure they'll they'll do a proper trailer closer yeah. with the date. But I'm... I'd forgotten that existed until I saw that. I didn't yeah. watch it. I just remember seeing it. I'm sure I glossed over it. <laughs> probably. I probably glossed over that. Uh, but that is that has been the news. Uh, so yeah, obviously let us know what you thought of uh, the news items and the comments and you know rate us on your podcast app, all that kind of thing. All that stuff helps. But of course, helping even more than that is going to patreoncom slash TV, where you can support us for as little as one dollar per month, and you get some stuff early. You get bonuses and extras for certain things, including the monthly show. Just for one dollar, you get uh, a few extra bonuses. But one of them is a, a show that we call Mailed Fuzz Mysteries for no reason other than we have no idea what else to call it, and it's just me and Car talking about random topics. It's See, I feel like the the better you know s- s- pitch line for that is you know mm-hmm. it's called Malford Mysteries. And why? It's a mystery. Lean into it. That was what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, pathetic. That's what the word I was looking for. Doesn't matter. Lean into it. So, go check out Patreon. Uh, and other than that, you know, thank you very much once again for watching or listening. We yeah, really appreciate it. So obviously, you know, we we mentioned Dark a few times. That's coming back next week. Mm-hmm. We just started reviewing Tool to Die Young from Amazon Prime. That's the Nicholas Wendig Reffin show. Uh, so the first review of that's up. If you want to go check and that out, and it is absolutely a Reffin show. Oh, it absolutely is. Um, so you can check out that. And uh, obviously, uh, Big Little Lies is every week right now, as is Handmaid's Tale. Those reviews are those going up. Uh, worth mentioning uh, and reiterating this. Oh, if you're on YouTube, all these reviews are just up on YouTube, obviously. If you listen to the audio feed, the Mail Fuzz, uh, the Almost Cancelled TV, or the Mail Fuzz TV and Movie News audio feed that we've got. If you listen to this on that, uh, all the TV reviews can be found on two different feeds. One is the Netflix Originals feed, um, which has all the Netflix shows, and then one's just the Almost Cancelled TV Reviews feed, which has... Uh, everything else basically that we're, we're reviewing so uh go check out those uh but that's us so thank you once again for watching and listening we always appreciate it keep watching tv guys have you got any vanilla